Good morning, everyone from Asia. We apologize for being slightly late, but we thank you for joining us here today for this very special Lee Siblings Media Day. We're joined by a family of martial artists, the one women's atomweight world champion, unstoppable Angela Lee, the one lightweight world champion, Christian the Warrior Lee, and rising star Victoria the Prodigy Lee. As you may already know, one championship is back this September 24th with one revolution. And this event has not one, but three world title fights. So fans are in for a treat. Headlining the event is reigning one lightweight world champion, Christian Lee, who is here with us today. He will be defending his title against the number three ranked lightweight contender, Ok Rae Yoon. Can Christian clean out the lightweight division by defeating the only man left in the top five? We're all excited to find out. Also on the One Revolution card, and here with us today is the youngest of the Lee sisters, Victoria Lee, who impressed us all in her first two fights in one. She's back for the third time this year to face Victoria Souza. We're so honored that the One Women's Atomweight World Champion, Angela Lee, is also here to support her siblings and share with us her thoughts on last Friday night's One Empower event featuring the One Women's Atomweight World Grand Prix. Angela's expected to be back soon to face the winner of that tournament. It's so great to see all of you here together. Thanks for joining us. How are you all doing? Yeah, thank you for having us. You know, it's so nice that we can all do this media together and, you know, uh, over here through Zoom. So it's it's cool. Uh, we've got all the media joining us from around the world. First up, we're going to go to Jay Anderson of cage side press. I want to start with uh, Victoria heading into this fight. Uh, you know, you're two fights into your career now going into number three, just how different is the feeling going into this third fight compared to bouts number one and two in terms of nerves and everything else in terms of preparation? I feel like going into my third bout, I'm a lot more comfortable. Uh, there's a lot less newness of everything. And I feel like I've been able to build upon my camp from the second fight. And um, this third camp has been going smoothly. You know, Victoria is uh, undefeated like yourself. So just give us your thoughts going into this matchup against her. I think that my next opponent is tough. She has a 5-0 record. And I think it's going to be an exciting match because we're both finishers and I don't think it's going to go to the distance. All right. And uh, for Christian, you're also on the card as well, obviously sharing it with your younger sister. What does that mean to you? I know you've done it with Angela as well, but getting this opportunity, what does that mean to you? I'm very excited to be sharing uh, my first event with my little sister, Victoria. Um, you know, it's, it's really interesting how everything goes because when I first started my career, I was sharing the card with my older sister, Angela. And, you know, for the beginning of our careers, many of our fights were shared on the same cards. And so now, um, you know, me being the champion headlining this event, uh, I'm really excited to have Victoria on the card with me as well. And, you know, we're going to put on a great show for the fans and I'm excited to be heading to Singapore together with her. And obviously in your case, it's a title defense. Uh, in this case, Akre Yoon, uh, just let us uh, into your thoughts on that matchup. And is there any part of you that kind of wish this was maybe Eddie Alvarez because of his notoriety and the uh, higher profile that might bring? No, you know, um, I'm glad that I'm fighting Oak. And in my opinion, Oak Rayun is the only guy deserving of the title shot right now. He's ranked number five in the division. I think, um, actually, correct. Um, sorry, I believe he just got moved up to number three. Um, so, you know, he's the only guy in the top five I have, haven't faced yet. And Eddie Alvarez, um, you know, he was a big name coming over from the UFC. Um, you know, when one championship signed him, he had a lot of traction behind him. But since then, he hasn't done enough, you know, to build himself a, a run up to the title. So yeah, I'm still waiting on Eddie to start winning a few fights. And then we can square off in that circle. But for now, I'm very glad to be facing Oak. And I feel like he's the only worthy contender. And last one for me too. Angela, thanks very much for joining us with the, uh, I guess, the youngest Lee there with you. Um, just curious about your thoughts on the quarterfinals of the Adam Waite Grand Prix. Obviously, there was a little bit of controversy in the Denise Zamboanga versus uh, Sohi Ham fight. And I just wanted to get your opinion on who you thought won that fight. Um... I think it's hard to say. I mean, it's a close fight. Um, I did, you know, in my eyes, I did see Denise um, 
you know, edging out the victory. Um, but yeah, it was a close fight, you know, um, both of them landed. It's kind of hard um, when it goes into the judges' hands because, you know, there's been many bad calls before. I've been on the, you know, bad end of a decision. Um, and of course, it's frustrating. Uh, that's why I make it a point to, you know, always try and go for the finish because if you leave it in the judges' hands, you never know what's going to happen. Um, but yeah, none of both of them weren't close to finishing the fight, and so it's kind of hard to say. Uh, but yeah, a lot of uh, drama going on about that now. Absolutely, and I'll, I'll squeeze one more in. Out of the uh, competitors who are left in the Grand Prix, who do you see going to the final, and who do you think you'll be fighting down the road uh, for your title? You know what? All of the matches have been exciting. Um, who I see in the finals potentially is um, maybe Stamp and 3-2, I think. So we'll see. Our next question comes from Leon Jennings of Asian Persuasion MMA. Uh, first question for Angela. What do you think of the Jong Jing Nan versus Michelle Nicolini fight? And having fought both of them previously, what was your prediction going into that fight? Um, yeah, I predicted that Jong would win. Um, you know, I I was going to say that she might get, um, you know, knockout or TKO, but, um, you know, decision also. I think Zhang played it very safe. She played a very smart game. Um, and, yeah. Cool to see you, Lil Ava, there. How is motherhood? How's training as a mother? And also, obviously, you're probably going to be competing in February now, not November. Is that a good thing, or are you itching to get back in there? Uh, motherhood is amazing. It's definitely changed me. Um, it is different training now um definitely have to schedule things you know um far in advance and everything needs to be flexible because of uh, the baby but i'm very excited to get back in there um i've started to train again alongside my brother and sister as they get ready for their fights um and after this event in september um we're gonna be you know kicking it into gear and uh getting my fight camp started so very excited for that. Um, and yeah, I think fighting in February is going to be great for me. Uh, it's going to give me even more time to come back even stronger. And I'm really excited for it. Christian, similar question. How, how was your first ever training camp as a father? Um, my first training camp as a father has been going great. And I, I feel so, so lucky and so blessed to have such a great, um, great wife and uh, such a great baby because, you know, my wife and my, my daughter, they come to the gym with me every day. So I never really have to be apart from them. Uh, we go in together in the morning, I train, and then we come home together as well. So, um, so far training camp has been going um, exactly the same as it has every fight before. And I feel more ready than I've ever been. Oh, and I know you're not looking past Oak, but there's a big card coming up in December. You've discussed before about moving up, challenging Abbasov for the World Weight title. Is that a possibility if you get through Oak later this month? I definitely plan on moving up to World's Weight and claiming the belt there. But right now, nothing is more important than the fight at hand, and I'm not taking Oak for you and lightly. So uh, I would love to talk about the World's Weight division, but I'll do so after I defend my belt. Cool. Victoria, obviously, Angela, Christian, they've, they've fought on the same card before. This is your first time competing on the same card as one of them with Christian. How, how do you feel about that? Oh, well, I'm really excited to be competing with my brother. Um, I think it's going to be a really cool experience to be able to travel and see how things go on fight week. I haven't been able to watch his fight in a very long time live, and I'm just really excited for that. Good. Obviously, you're an atom by yourself. Who impressed you, especially in, in the Grand Prix last week? Um, I, I think that... Um, the card last week was, everybody on that card was really talented. And I think that the most exciting match to me was, um, the stamp versus Rasuhinia fight because there was just so much action and, and, um, yeah, that was the most exciting bout for me to watch. Our next question comes from Chris Mancuso of Tops Off Sports. Christian, I'm going to lead off with you. We had you on Jake Shields podcast, basically, uh, you were a fresh father. First off, how are you sleeping? How are things going on that? And uh, things getting easier for you? Yeah, you know, um, everything 
has been going great. Uh, I've been sleeping really well. Thankfully, my baby girl, she loves to sleep through the night. And so um, it really, you know, we, my wife and I, we've just been blessed with uh, such a great baby. She loves to sleep. She loves to eat. And, um, you know, she's growing very well. So um, everything has been going great as father. That's incredible. That's incredible. Now, have you noticed, um, you know, you come back into it. You're just freshly a father. Uh, was there any lag time going back into the gym or was it kind of business as usual? Did you find any difference? No, for me, um, I did have a few weeks of downtime just at home, you know, enjoying the time as a father. But right away, I was back into the gym preparing. Um, I, you know, I sort of had a feeling that Oprah Yoon was going to be the next guy. So really, I've been training for him uh, since early in this year, um, shortly after my title defense. So um, I've, I've been continuing my training as usual. Uh, so I wake up, I go into the gym, and my wife and my daughter, they come in and follow me as well. So everything's been going just, just like normal. You mentioned Eddie Alvarez on our podcast then. He got brought up earlier. Um, there was actually blowback from that clip. I know one championship pulled it. Eddie Alvarez got all excited. So say, for example, you do get through Oak and all of a sudden Eddie Alvarez wins his next fight in, in, in some sort of uh, devastating fashion. Would you wait? Would you, would you stay in the division to fight Eddie Alvarez before jumping up if he came out and showed you he belongs? Absolutely. You know, I think that's definitely a fight the fans have been wanting to see. And, um, you know, all we're really waiting for is for Eddie to win a fight and then we'll make it happen. So, um, you know, not looking past Oprah Yoon at all. Once I get past my next opponent, defend my belt, then um, I'm looking forward to seeing what Eddie can do in the division. Next up, we go to Kyle Siegel from Going Live Podcast. It's kind of funny, you know, you just dispatch one's like two most for you know, ferocious strikers with ease almost, especially, you know, with Timothy. What's, what's like a 2022 look like for you? You know, your ultimate goal. Are you double champ? You know, are you just king of the lightweight division? What's your goal? Well, I plan on uh, clearing out the lightweight division by the end of this year. And really, after Okra Yoon, um, you know, if Eddie can work his way up, he might be up there. But really, the lightweight division has been cleared out. So my goal for this year is to clear out the lightweight division. Next year, I plan on being a double champ and continuing to defend my belt in light lightweight division as well. That's awesome to hear. And um, looks like your sister's left. So I'll ask you, you know, if your sisters get to that point where they're at and wait, you know, contenders, they have to fight each other. I think that's a pretty good uh, publicity Chautry uh, could cash in on or what? <laughs> uh, well, you know, the thing is, every family is different. Uh, my family happens to be very close. And you know, knowing my two sisters, they would never square off in the cage, not for any amount of money. And um, it would be great publicity. I'm sure there's people that would want to see that. But um, a more realistic um, scenario is going to be Angela moving up to claim a second belt once she defends her Adam Wee title right around the time that Victoria is going up to fight for the Adam Wee, the vacant Adam Wee belt. Next up, we have Dylan Bowker from My MMA News. Oh, my first question there was for Christian, just because there's been some level of dialogue so far about a one championship show transpiring in America. I'm kind of wondering what would the temperature be for you on performing on a show in America under the one banner? I would love to, you know, be the first person to headline an event when one championship comes to America. You know, I live here in Hawaii. This is my home. And, um, you know, so America is, is where I live. I would love to, to headline that event. And I think that, you know, one championship coming to America would be very big. Um, there's already a very strong following of people that, you know, watch every single one championship event or watch it on the rerun because, uh, you know, the time zones are very different. But I think that if there was a one championship event to come here, primetime U.S. Um, US show, then, you know, it would just build a huge following of fans for one championship here in America. And um, I hope to see, you know, more, more and more shows able to come to America by next year. Yeah, that would be awesome for sure. And my follow-up question here is for Angela, because when I was speaking with your sister, Victoria, ahead of her last fight there, she was talking about how it was cool that you were able to reintegrate yourself into training, you know, do some drills again. I'm kind of curious to hear your perspective, just being able to 
you know, get back to it alongside your sister in her burgeoning fight career? I really missed being um, on the mats with my siblings. And so I was very excited to get back. Um, I didn't have to ease myself into it. Um, for me, that was difficult because I like to just go 100% and my mind remembers where I left off. Um, but yeah, now that we're kind of past that stage, I'm kind of getting back into, you know, more serious training. It's so nice to see, um, you know, just how much Victoria has been progressing and, um, you know, really making a name for herself in the organization. So I'm very, very proud of her. Appreciate the insights in that regard. And my final question here is for Victoria, because I was noticing your primary training partner there, Adrian Lee, captured his first national title there. Can you speak to the work you were able to get within him recently and just how great that was? Great as always. Oh, it was awesome. Earlier this, um, earlier last month, my little brother was able to win his first national title. And um, I believe he won it in two divisions. And I was just so proud of him. I've He's been such an amazing training partner for me um, throughout all of my fight camps. And, and um, yeah, I'm just so lucky to have him as a little brother and as a training partner. This question comes in via text from Faris Farhan of Singapore Strike Sports, who asks Victoria and Christian, are you guys aiming for a first round win? Will that be tradition for all the Lee siblings? We'll go to Victoria with that one first. Yes, I plan on... For this match, I plan on finishing in the first round. This fight is going to end in the first round. First round submission. Japanese media coming in with the question, Shinya Aoki is winning after the loss against Christian, against you in 2019. Do you think he deserves a shot at the title again? I think that Shinya Aoki um, is an amazing fighter. And since losing the title to me, he's, uh, I believe he's won two fights. And so... Um, he's definitely back on a winning streak. And um, I think maybe one more fight against a guy in the top five, and he would definitely be um, deserving of a title shot. But, um, you know, I've, I've heard some recent interviews of Shinya himself, you know, saying that that's not something he plans on. So, um, you know, I'm never going to call out, you know, Shinya. I, I really like him as a friend, as a former training partner. Um, and, you know, the fight originated with him calling me out. But, you know, for me, um, I just I have so much respect for him. I'm not going to sit here calling him out. If that's something that he wants, then I'm sure he'll he'll fight his way up there. Our next question comes in from Ivan Ruiz of Daily Tribune. This one's for Angela. What are your thoughts on the recent decision of one to review the match between Denise and Shohi Ham? I think that you know um, anyone who is on the bad side of a you know bad decision or the losing side of a bad decision is going to call for it to be reviewed. Um, like I said earlier, I'm not sure. Uh, in my mind, both ladies, you know, it was pretty even. Um, yes, I do think that Denise edged out the win. Um, but none of them, none of, neither of them were close to finishing the fight. And if there was a near finish, I think that would really be the deciding factor. Um, but yeah, we'll see what one championship decides. Um, it's hard, you know, The when it goes to the judges, it's, it's no longer in our hands. So we just have to wait and see. The follow-up question from Ivan was, Denise has always said she wants to fight you. Any chance we'll get to see you duke it out inside the circle? Yeah, I think so. I think it could happen. Um, you know, if she does end up, you know, falling out of the Grand Prix, I think that if she has a fight with, you know, say, who, what's, who's another person that fell out? Mengbo. Um, if those two matched up and if she wins, then yeah, for sure, I'd like to, to fight her. I just don't think that you can um, have a shot at the title coming off of a loss. So I think she need to fight someone before getting that title shot. We'll go to our next media question coming in via text. This one is from James Reese of Overtime Heroics MMA, who says, Hi all, hope you're well. Question for both Angela and Victoria. With the impressive start that Victoria has had in the atom weight division, have you had the discussion of what will happen if Victoria keeps impressing and starts to mount a challenge for the championship? I think Christian touched upon this one earlier, but Angela, if you want to go first. Of course. Um, yeah, so I'm really, really excited for Victoria. Um, 
of course her skill level I think is such a, that she could definitely be a world champion in the near future. Um, you know, this is going to be her third fight with the organization. Um, I think a lot of times because her skill level is so high, people overlook the fact that she's still 17. She still only had three MMA fights. So, you know, she said a lot of times in interviews, she doesn't want to rush the process, but I do think it's going to happen naturally. And, you know, once Victoria um, starts climbing the ranks and um, taking out the top five in the atomweight division, I do see myself moving up to the strawweight division and, um, you know, looking to capture that world title. And, um, and I think that, you know, it's going to be the Lee's making history again. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Wait and see. Same question for Victoria. Are you quite happy with that plan? I think that's a great plan. Um, yeah, as I'm heading into my third fight, I'm just I'm just taking it one step at a time, you know, treating each fight like it's the most important of my life and just seeing where it goes from there. Our next question from James again says, uh, are we all likely to see a fourth Lee sibling anytime soon? We've heard previously all the huge compliments aimed at Adrian, how he's training. How is he getting on? And uh, is him joining one something that he's looking to pursue? Um, so, yeah, uh, a lot of people, you know, recently have heard about Adrian. Um, he uh, has been training alongside the, the three of us for many years now. And, um, you know, he's done very well in his last few competitions. Uh, he is still a sophomore in high school. So... Um, he has told us that he does, he has an interest in fighting, um, but he does want to finish high school. Um, but yeah, we'll see. His skill level is definitely there. And within a few years, I think it's really going to mature and develop. And he's going to be, you know, a huge threat, um, you know, if he decides to join one. Uh, yeah, you know, just basically everything Angela touched on. Um, Adrian is extremely talented. You know, he... He's also a league. He comes from the same family. He's got the same training. And it's really up to him. He's got all the skills and all the talent in the world. So if he does choose to be a professional fighter, to join one championship, I think he's going to do extremely well and follow the same journey that the three of us have so far. No, I, I agree 100% with what um, my brother and sister said. Awesome. All right. Our next question comes from Andrew Mack of MMA Island. Uh, first for Christian and Angela, coming from a family of fighters, you guys have been exposed to fighting for a long time. Now that you both have children, is it something you'd like to continue? Would you let your kids watch your fights when they're like 8, 9, 10? Yeah, so I definitely am going to have my daughter with me at my fights. Um, I think that... You know, it'll be a very unique experience for her, um, added motivation for me. And luckily with our family, I know that, um, you know, my husband, my mom, my siblings, they can all um, help to watch Ava while I'm out there. And I know that she's going to be in good hands. Um, will I let Ava fight? That's the question I get asked a lot. And if you ask me, like, do you want your daughter to be a fighter? Honestly, I'm going to say no. Just I, I know how difficult it is and I know there are a million other, you know, um, opportunities for her out there. So I really want her to explore um, those other options and find her true passion, whatever that may be. Um, but if she does have the same passion for martial arts, of course, I'm going to be supporting her 1000%. Um, yeah, for me, um, of course, I'm going to have my, my daughter there with me. Um, in the future, it doesn't matter how old she is. Um, this last event, I was really looking forward to uh, bringing my wife and my daughter to Singapore with me to watch me fight. Uh, however, due to the COVID restrictions, um, my baby is not old enough to enter Singapore yet. Right now, they're not accepting babies into the country as they're not able to you know, vaccinate or test them. So unfortunately, she's staying at home for this one. But if the next, next event, one championship, um, you know, brings the show to the United States or if Singapore opens up, then uh, my daughter will definitely be there in the front row watching me fight. Saying she and the Ten Rings recently hit theaters, the movie has been a beacon for Asians worldwide and given us something to look up to for someone who looks like us and has many of the same experiences as us. At the same time, as one becomes more popular in the West, 
You guys have also become icons in the Asian community to look up to as well. You're essentially the real life versions of saying Chi, these unstoppable Asian warrior prodigies. Tell me, how does that feel? I haven't really seen um, like what that movie is about. I just know that it's um, it's based on like, it's the first blockbuster Marvel movie um, with like, uh, the majority of the cash cast is Asian, and I'm just really excited to watch it. I've heard great reviews about it, and I think that um, it's really awesome to have such a big blockbuster film um, starred as like an Asian superhero. So I think that's really cool. Sure. Um, so I am super excited for this film. Um, I love movies, and I try to watch them all as soon as they come out. Uh, unfortunately, because you know, have a baby now, it's kind of hard to catch the movies in the theaters. So I was hoping that they'd be releasing it to stream like on Disney Plus or HBO Max or something, but no luck. Um, I'm very excited for this film. And I think it really, you know, means a lot for us coming from, you know, our Asian ethnicity, also being martial artists. I think we can relate a lot to the movie. And, um, you know, just having a Marvel superhero who looks like us, who comes from our same background, we can relate on so many different levels. Um, so very excited for this film. And yeah, I think it's going to be a hit. Um, you know, for me, I haven't, um, I haven't really heard much about the movie yet, but I think it's great that, you know, they're incorporating every ethnicity and, and you know, making them into Marvel superheroes and, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see every ethnicity up there on, on the, the superhero blockbuster list. And um, I'll definitely be looking for it in the movies when it comes out. Uh, could you guys just respond to how does it feel to be like an Asian icon that people can look up to, like Shang-Chi as well? Um, you know, for me, um, I think it's, uh, it's a great honor to be uh, somebody that you know, other people can look up to, you know, for me, myself, um, I try not to, you know, put myself in that position where I, I look at myself as a role model, but I know in the line of work, you know, being a champion, naturally that that is going to happen. And I'm just, I'm very grateful that I have this platform to really set a good example to all of the young kids out there or anyone aspiring to, to be a fighter, to be a world champion in anything in life. And, um, I just feel extremely grateful that I'm in this position where I can impact people, hopefully in a positive way. Yeah, I think that representation is extremely important. And, um, you know, for myself and for my brother and even for my sister, Victoria, um, to be on this kind of platform where we get to voice our opinions, stand up for things that matter to us and, you know, kind of raise awareness for important topics. These are all things that, I feel I'm very lucky to, to do and that I'm able to touch so many people. And um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's a huge responsibility for us, um, but it's also a big honor um, to be role models to kids, to women, to everyone all across the world. Yeah, I just, I just think I'm really lucky that like people that the like Asian superheroes and, and the role models that other little kids are looking up to in this movie. I mean, I've grown up with them in my household. They're my brother and my sister, my mom and dad. And so I think with this movie, it's going to be, you know, something that other little kids have someone to look up to as well. Our next question comes from Nick Atkin of SCMP MMA. Just wanted to go to Victoria first. Um, What's it been like kind of going back to normal life after your last win and, and you know, getting back to school? Does, does it kind of bring you down to earth or do you enjoy that side of it? And um, I imagine you just take it all in your stride like you have done throughout your career. Yeah, um, after my second fight, I was I just went right back into school, um, starting off my senior year. And it's it's different, but it's the same. I mean, I'm incorporating my training schedule as I'm preparing for my third fight camp, but also I have to incorporate schooling and homework. So um, it all balances out. And I think it's it's neat that I'm kind of living a double life now. <laughs> you you got the next fight coming up, but uh, you've been very busy. Would you like to fight on that December card as well, the 10th anniversary card and get a fourth fight in this year? 
as I've said um, in previous interviews, I would love to stay as active as possible. Um, but for right now, I'm just primarily focusing on my fight in two weeks. And I just want to give my 100% focus to it because this is the most important fight of my life and I'm not going to look past it. Can't wait to see it. Um, and, and one for Christian, what do you need to look out for from Oak? And do you think Eddie Alvarez maybe underestimated him a little bit? I think that, um, you know, Eddie Alvarez definitely underestimated Oak. Um, in his first fight against Marat, you know, you really just saw him being more defensive, stuffing his takedowns. But when he went in there against Eddie, he really brought his A game. He stepped up to the plate and Oak displayed, you know, a great showcase of accurate striking that dropped Eddie Alvarez in the first round and followed up with landing clean strikes and stuffing his takedowns in the second and the third. So for me, um, my main thing is, is not looking past Oak Rayun. I think the biggest mistake people make when they fight a guy like Oak is looking past him because he's extremely durable and he's a very consistently good fighter. So he's always going to go in there and show up and bring his all. And um, I'm just going to go in there, do what I do, and look to finish him as quickly as I as I possibly can. Yeah, you seem to have a lot of respect for him as well. I think the way he uh, asked for the fight was was very respectful. Um, was, was that part of the reason you agreed to fight him? Yeah, that was definitely part of the reason. Um, yeah, I really like how respectful Oak was when making the call out, you know, um, different from how many people are trying to do it these days where they want to talk smack, you know, they want to make a lot of noise so that people pay attention to them. But, uh, you know, a guy like Oak, he just goes in there, he puts in the work, he won his two fights against former champions, and then he was very respectful about his call out as well. So I'm more than happy to fight a guy like that. Yeah, I can't wait to see that one as well. And I guess just for Angela, everyone's been asking you, yeah, about Denise. Um, but I wanted to ask you, what did you think of Ham? What did you make of her performance? Uh, she came in with a lot of hype. Um, she seemed to dismiss Denise a little bit before the fight. Do you think she maybe found out the level here is, is higher than she maybe thought? Uh, yeah, just what do you think of her performance? Mm, yeah, I, you know, I think that there wasn't too many things in the fight that kind of stood out. Like, um, there wasn't any near finishes. Uh, I think that, you know, she probably ha she has a lot of experience. And um, but I do think, you know, I don't know, it's hard to say. Um, I think I, I respect her experience, but, you know, we'll see how she does against the girls in this Grand Prix because the girls are exciting. They're young, they're hungry. Um, and yeah, I'm just seeing, I'm excited to see um, this next matchup of rounds and, and how the fans are going to uh, match them up because I think that's very cool that the organization is going to be putting um, that freedom of choice into the fans' hands. Have you voted yet? Have you which fights would you like to see in the semis? I would like to see um, Ritu and Itsuki and Stamp and um, So Hiham. And um, I just wanted to ask you about Ritu as well and Meng. Um, I think Meng was the favorite going into that fight. Uh, she had called you out before, said she was coming for the belt, but you know now she's uh, she's out of the tournament. Did did Ritu surprise you? And uh, what did you make of Meng? You know. Uh, what are your thoughts on both of their performances? Uh, that was an exciting fight for me. You know, I was rooting for Ritu uh, just because of how much crap that Mengbo was talking uh, <laughs> leading up to this Grand Prix. So I was really rooting for her and it was um, a little bit nerve wracking in the first round because she almost got knocked out a couple times. But uh, you could really see after the fight, you could really see how, you know, tough she is and she's a really big heart. So there's no quit in her. Um, and yeah, she just, uh, handled her in the second and third round. And, um, after the match ended, you could see it all over her face. Like Mengbo was just like devastated, like what happened? And that was just priceless. So I really think, you know, both ladies got what they deserved. And if I could just squeeze one in, sorry, uh, just finally your thoughts on the whole picture of this division now, so many exciting fighters, you know, even the, the women who lost, there's so many matchups you can make and you got Julie Mizababa who beat Mei Yamaguchi. Uh, just what's your whole take on the state of this division? Yeah, I'm so happy to see so many new faces in, in the Adam Weight division. I think it's great um, that it's growing so rapidly, especially with this Grand Prix. Um, 
and yeah, I'm pretty sure after this all ends and uh, there is a Grand Prix champion, um, you know, we're going to have a, a top 10. The girls are going to be able to fight each other in the organization. We're not going to be needing to pull in a lot of other um, girls. And uh, yeah, we're going to have like a top 10 and it's going to be awesome. It's a stacked division. Just a follow up for Angela and Christ Christian. Christian, you're talking about how respectful Oak has been. What's the weakest or most disappointing trash talk that you've experienced in your MMA career for Christian and Angela? Uh, man, I mean, you know, for me, it's there's certain people that, that can actually pull off the trash talk. There's certain people where it's just in them, you know, where they, they really um, just can't help themselves. You know, like, uh, you know, a guy like Conor McGregor, when he's calling people out, he really means it. Um, and then you got guys like Eddie Alvarez, who, you know, really try to stir up drama when there is no drama. There's never been anything between me and Eddie. We see each other in the hallway of a fight. And, you know, we, we, we see each other and everything is fine. There's, there's no real drama between us. But, um, you know, I guess online there is. I don't spend my time tracking it, so I'm not sure what's set out there. But um, for me, any, any trash talk, every trash talk that has ever been said from any of my opponents is just a joke to me. And I don't spend any time paying attention to it. Yeah, I agree with Christian. I think that a lot of the time um, it comes off as fake because, you know, people, that's the end thing. Everybody wants to see the drama. They want to hype up the fight and get the fans excited. Um, and sometimes it just comes off as it's just so corny and Honestly, for me, this whole time that I've been a pro fighter, I've always wanted to stay true to myself and be authentic, and I can't pull it off. If I start talking crap about someone, it's just going to sound ridiculous. Um, so yeah, whenever someone starts to you know, talk a lot of trash, for me, um, oftentimes, it seems to me like they're just overlooking me. Um, they're too confident in themselves, or they're just trying to start you know, some drama to hype it up. So I just look, I just look past it all. And you know, what counts the most is what happens when the cage door closes. Have you had any instances in your one career with opponents or potential opponents where it just backfired or, or didn't work for you? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, or for me, or it didn't work for me. Or it didn't work for them. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's kind of a funny story with um, Jenny Huang. That was my first title defense. And, um, you know, she was talking a lot of trash in Chinese <laughs> to me uh, before the fight. And, um, you know, I was like, what is this girl um, trying to hype this up? Whatever. I was very annoyed going into the fight. And, uh, you know, when I finally got to get a hold of her and we, we, we fought, I just, you could see it from that fight. Like, I just had such a great time beating her up. And yeah, it's because she was talking trash. But in the end, it was great for me. I just enjoyed myself that much more. We'll go ahead then to Luisa, who has a question for Angela. Xiong Jing Nan defended her strawweight strap once again last week. We know that you tried also to conquer that weight class. Do you see yourself trying again? Definitely, 100%. Um, you know, after I faced the winner of this Grand Prix, um, I am going to be moving up to the strawweight division. And whoever is the champion at that time, you know, I'm hoping to challenge them. And that's one of my goals still, capture that straw weight belt. Next question comes from CSAT of GMA Network. This is a question for Angela. Angela, normally under normal circumstances, a world champion in combat sports would have to defend his or her title at least one a year, once a year. Now, to next month, you'll be off the cage for two years now. So the question here is, how do you react to criticisms that you only get to do this, you only get to do a two-year two vacation only because you are the poster girl of one championship? Um, you know, well, I disagree with that. First of all, these aren't normal times. Um, there's a global pandemic going on, which has, you know, made it difficult to host a lot of events and you know, it's been it's been hard for everyone around the world, you know. Um, second of all, I do think that what Chatri did kind of makes a statement for everyone. It's not because I'm the poster girl. It's because this is just a given, right? I think that 
I work so hard to get to the position I'm at. And just because I get pregnant and I want to have a baby that I shouldn't be stripped of my title, something that I work towards. I think that because one championship has, you know, kind of shown the way of like, this is what the standard should be when a woman gets pregnant in her work, like she is supported and she has a, a job to come back to afterwards. And, you know, I think that I'm very lucky, of course, and I know that it's going to come with a lot of criticism and a lot of hate, but I know how hard I worked for this and I'm not just going to, you know, have that taken from me. So that's, that's what I think. I mean, but, but the uh, practice, Angela, the standard is you, you get to defend your title at least once a year. I mean, I mean, nobody's blaming you for being pregnant here. Don't get us wrong. We're all happy for you. But, you know, again... You, you mentioned that we are in the middle of the pandemic, but, you know, people are fighting. Championships are being defended as well, you know, just like your brother here, uh, Christian Lee. But did it ever occur to you that maybe you should uh, take the high road? I, no, Nobody's asking you for the title. I mean, if you vacate the title, they're going to fight for it. But did it ever occur to you that maybe you should vacate the title instead? And who would fight for it? So Denise is so-called the number one contender. Who would she fight? There was no one else in the division. There's an end of weight Grand Prix that was supposed to be happening, and it was planned before I even announced that I was pregnant. Who would she fight? I think it's ridiculous. So then maybe if that is the case, you and Denise could have gone at it directly then if, you know, why why the Grand Prix, right? I mean, and then who's going to fight? No, you're saying I guess... if, I, if I was stripped of my title and there was going to be um, an interim championship, who would Denise fight? Well, there is a top five. I mean, there is a top five rankings right now that I guess the number one and number two could fight for. It, it really depends on one championship uh matchmaking though so whoever fights for it fights for it whoever deserves it more i mean what about you what do you think if ever that all right was the well case? i don't think that you or me have a say in what this organization organization does you know so let's leave it up to the people who actually run the company okay so i guess that answers the question you never thought of vacating the title and just take it to your vacation that's it no we really appreciate you joining us here today and we appreciate the media with their questions. We cannot wait to see everyone again this September 24th for One Revolution. Remember, there will be fans in attendance, so do log on to onefc.com. Sorry, I think that this One Empower card um, was an awesome event and I think it's just the start of so many more all-female cards. I really think that Female MMA is starting to grow as a sport. And I think that with more all female cards, it's really going to showcase all the skills that all the talent that women fighters have. And I think that what one championship did, did is a great start. Um, you know, I was very happy and very impressed with um, One Empower. I think that the ladies put on a very impressive card. Um, you know, from the first bout of the night all the way until the title fight, the main event, um, it was very exciting. And yeah, I, th I think it, was, it should be the first of many more to come. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We really appreciate you joining us here today.